Hello everybody, welcome to the Blood Bowl 3 Season Finals first round match between Plotinus in the blue and Call Troop in the red. Um, so Cold, uh, Plotinus has won the toss and chosen to receive. It is sweltering heat, so it makes sense to receive and heat, doesn't it? Make sure you can get your drive done and then if you're disadvantaged on the heat rolls, um, it's not so impactful. But 13 players is good for Call Troop for the heat, I guess. Um, they've both got teams. In the booth with me is Hargrim, the little the little James Bond fella on the teacup. Hello, <laughs> hello. It's an interesting interesting matchup. This isn't it. Call Troop got to the final of the NAF um, kickoff event. That's how he qualified, uh, where he lost to a, a dwarf uh, team, and uh, he might be getting flashbacks here because this is a similar team with a uh, four guard, a block. And they've gone for an extra mighty, oh well, a mighty blow, and they've got four block, four guard and a block. Whereas my team had one mighty blow, three guard and a block, so it's not that much better. And honestly, I don't like the block. I think with two runners, I think I wouldn't want a block, and I'd want an extra guard. And I think I'd rather have a skillless slayer and a mighty blow tackler. But yeah, you know. completely agree. The the one extra guard really helps in a lot of matchups, especially something like humans, where as you can see, he's got three guard already, one of them on a big guy. Yeah, and and similarly, I don't I don't like this tackle mighty blow hit uh, split. You know the people do. So we've got three guard, uh, tackle, and then two blocks, and two guards and a mighty blow. And I just I don't like the split. I think you know take an extra guard and then choose which one you want the most. <laughs> you know. That's yeah. what I think. I, I definitely think the tackle is redundant in like most matchups in this. Mm. So I think dropping the tackle is fine and just counting on the 30% in the matchups where it does matter. Uh, yeah. You could even run like a wrestle catcher instead of the block one. And definitely the, the thrower with, uh, with block is really redundant. Because if you're carrying on the thrower, the thrower should never be hit, so it never needs block, right? Well, they can, they can, they can know, can't they? They, 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 they can get hit. So, um, thank you, Steve. Yeah, I've actually, I've actually turned down five of the graphic settings to make it look, <laughs> to make it look uh, quite bright and stuff. Oh wow! Well, here we go. This is interesting, isn't it? This might give the uh, instant full blitz. Yeah, this might give the human something. You have to be really careful. Though, because if you overcommit, it's just going to become a problem for the rest of the drive. Yes. Yeah. And and actually, this is pretty good anti blitz, isn't it? As far as like anti similar bash team, you know, or not similar worse bash team <laughs> goes. Like you know, they can pile in, but they'll just give away more hits, won't they? It's not like elves that could run around the side or anything. This is. Uh, I think you probably should have just not even used the blitz. <laughs> Honestly, like. Uh, I mean, you can sort of destabilize the, uh, the dwarf position here because they're going to struggle a bit with stabilizing now. But oh, okay, oh. well, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Blitz was a genius idea. It was yep. genius. Yeah, genius. Yep, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely had to. Of course, you would never consider not blitzing with mighty blow. So of course, he blitz with mighty blow. <laughs> <laughs> Makes a cast. <laughs> Apple works. So um yeah, wow, what a what a star for Cold Troop. Instantly down to ten players, uh, is Still, Yeah, down to ten players is really bad against the humans. Yeah. Um so the the pl the link for the play in fixtures, um so there's the predictions there, there's also Breaky T, right? Breaky T has put well, like when they're playing and stuff and has the whole draw there and everything. There's also like an official thing that has the uh, the draw and everything, but uh, I don't have the link for that on me. <laughs> and uh, the Breaky T one's better. <laughs> Honestly, the Breaky T spreadsheet is better than their than their one. Um, I'll I'll link I'll link their ones. Here we go. I've got. But I'm not sure their times are right. <laughs> I think they've got I think they've got Inarian versus uh, Chuntra at 9 yeah yeah they've got Inarian versus Chuntra at 7 instead of at 9 and they've got Elliot Diamond at 1 instead of 3 so I think they've they've mis mistranslated the times so yeah I wouldn't wouldn't pay much attention to their one <laughs> I'll have to tell them that all of the times are wrong classic sign yep or Nakon or 
QST, whatever. VBD, yeah. whatever. Yeah. But yeah, they've got the times wrong on that one. I guess they've like they've translated it from from you know not French to not English <laughs> somehow <laughs> somehow um, yeah. Well, the dwarf getting it down to ten versus ten is pretty nice, but they're still down a guard blitzer comparable to a human lineman. So yeah. Yeah. Wow, Wandy. Wandy. That is uh, not what I would have done, but who can say if it's good or bad? It's pretty good. I guess he had to, right? So then now he can 1D the ogre, yeah. He could have also, like, GFI'd and then got a 2D on the ogre, but then uh, then he's really weak that side, isn't he? Oh my god. Jesus. 1D in the ogre. Oh, look at that. It showed an armor break, but there wasn't one. Oh. It's a very annoying. So that bug still hasn't been fixed then. Correct. <laughs> And there's another one. <laughs> Are you sure it's not just you having the wrong ones turned on? I mean, imagine that. What do you think? I mean, think think before you speak, Hargrim, right? Is it, <laughs> is it Jimmy Fantastic being wrong, or is it Cyanide being wrong? I'm starting to think it might actually be you. <laughs> oh, hello. Yeah, huge cars. So there you go, the Mighty Blow guy got his cars, and then... The Slayer got it back, like he opened himself to a mighty blow hit, didn't he, to make the blitz. So actually, it turns out, Jimmy was right, should not have taken part in that blitz. Got two players removed, um, including his mighty blow blitzer permanently. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, Soku, yeah. I'll, I'll, we'll have to make a Jimmy Fantastic one and then I can, I can, I can, <laughs> I can make sure it's correct. <laughs> because the breaky T one is quite isn't quite right, like that five fifty three one and whatever. It, the, the, those like dodgy times aren't correct. So, yeah. You know the the casted ones that are in the breaky T one. If you're here, if you're here, I shall tell you the times of these. Hopefully, nothing will happen in the game here. <laughs> Nothing's happening. Full troop is just shuffling about. Good. It's all about the shuffling, isn't it? It really is. Right. Art versus Andy is seventeen fifty. Um. No, no, it's not seventeen. Oh, yes, yeah, UTC plus one. Yes. Yeah. So it's so uh, yeah, it's sixteen fifty UTC. Right. Sixteen fifty UTC. Not sixteen fifty three. Then. The Strider game is 7.10 UTC, not 7.09 UTC. And then the final game there is um, at 9.10 UTC, not 9.25 UTC. So there you go. Break it. Well, I mean, I pronounce it break it. <laughs> It's break UT now. <laughs> you can't tell me how I pronounce it. <laughs> okay, break it. I'll try break it. I'm so I'm so used to break UT, but I'll try break it. This the ball's exposed, isn't he? Why did he put the ball so far forward? I hate people who put their balls in your face, honestly. Like you can just 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 take it back a bit, isn't it? There's no need to be quite There's so. There's no need aggressive. to shove them down our throat. Exactly, yeah. You know, it's just it's just no need at all. <laughs> right or don't? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Diced by pronunciation. Mm. Yeah, because this is the problem, right? He wants to move this guy over the like. This is mean he's moving these. Why isn't the ball here for a start? You, do you know what I mean? Like he's he's put it here and then he wants to move these guys in, and it's like he can't move everyone into where he wanted to move them in. 
Like he would have wanted to put that guard in there, right, in two D, but he just literally couldn't because he'd he'd randomly move the ball super yeah. far forward straight away. It's like it sort of feels like it's changing a plan halfway through the turn. Yes. Yeah. In fact, you can rest almost assured that's what it is, can't you? Yeah. Can we? Well, I guess can't hit the ball. It's, there's a guard there on that side. We could just blitz in and like have an ogre, an ogre on two here, and 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 players on the ball here. But he's already blitzed, so he's not going to do that. But he could have done. I guess he wants to fight and uh, try to stop everybody uh, getting surfed. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, hold on. Interesting. See, right? He didn't think about. He didn't think about protection enough. He, he didn't even think about pounding enough. <laughs> banging, let's say banging. Let's say banging, because then banging, there's banging is always on your mind, and then your side thoughts are penetration and protection, right? But it's always banging. Your goal is always banging, and it, almost every stage. And, and you know, it's only like, it's only actually scoring is when you stop thinking about banging. <laughs> it's only when you're scoring that you can stop thinking about banging. It's perfect. <laughs> Three P's and an S of Blood Bowl. Yep, there you go. Protection is optional, just look at Space Cadet, you know. <laughs> it, uh, <laughs> yeah, his, his protection is a disaster, but, it, but you know, it, it's trade-offs, isn't it? You've got a trade-off between protection and penetration, and it's rare that you can have both at the same time, because, you know, you've normally got to give up one to get the other. Hello, PC. Hello. Good afternoon. What a what a surprising treat. I just you know me. I hate knowing that I, something's happened three minutes ago and I wasn't watching that. <laughs> Brilliant. Is if, is your job started yet? Yes, I'm a week in. For how's okay. it going? Uh, I'm having a fantastic time. Stressful and difficult as it though it is. I'm trying to learn one of the great works of Shakespeare without ever rehearsing it. Um, <laughs> Fantastically, I get to see one of the great knights of the theatre do it, uh, and then I can just go, "Oh yeah, that's much better than what I had in mind." I'll do it that way. <laughs> Glorious. So I'm very much doing that. Yeah, that makes sense. Glorious. Can we have some more romance novel reading from Busy? Please, no. <laughs> <laughs> I I think Ooh. you've just had something fairly similar from Jimmy. <laughs> oh wow, he double wand. Flip me. Why are we? What are we? Why are we rushing there? To I, make that a two D. Yeah. And then put yourself in position to like you know do things next turn as well. well I mean to give the humans a huge problem because even standing edged it's a, a pain in the tits. So you've got to prioritise and do something about it before any chance for fail anywhere else. Yeah, yeah. Edging is a big concern. That's another part of Blood Bowl as well. Is that sometimes you get edged by the dice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, to use the more standard uh, definition of edging, yes. <laughs> do you do you uphill here for a crack at the ball, or do you you don't even need to? Do you? you've got you've got uh, catchers? Oh wow, yeah, you really need, had to GFI because look how bad this is. Oh no, he stood these, yeah. all these guys up. Okay, it's not bad at all. Well, I think he shouldn't have stood this guy up, should he? But it's about momentum as well, isn't it, Jim? I mean, as you know, in, in dwarfs, you need to get that momentum. Even if it's only a space or two forward, you need to be pushing them back, you need to be generating your space. Um, if they could hold them up even for two or three turns on the spot, it's, it's pretty good news. It's a decent start in getting a defence done against dwarfs. So. Yeah. Trying to push that piece out onto the edge was about that. It was about controlling what's where. Now with them all standing up and very little threat on the humans, as you see, they're, they're sort of pushing the dwarves back a bit. Yep. Yeah, you need to probe to get the penetration, don't you? You can't just like Absolutely. you can't just expect it without any work. You've got to, oh my god, here we go, another Kaz. You can't Walk just slam and forward and penetrate and expect it's going to be welcome and, and received well. <laughs> well, it's it's never received well, is it? <laughs> As you say, you have to probe a bit and open it up, and that's when you penetrate. Yeah, that is how it works. Yeah. <laughs> And there's 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 none of that happening here, is there? This is a pretty desperate drive for Plotinus right now. 
the dwarves desperate. are in trouble if they're a single player off the field. Even if that's matched with a player off on the opponent's side, because the opponents are almost always more movable and more maneuverable at higher speed, it's the dwarves' inability to cover the space and to cover the width of the field and to create options by having the odd dwarf around the edge. When you don't have that, you end up in a very tight pack, which is very hard to get through and for the humans to penetrate and steal the ball, maybe. But it's really hard to get any momentum going forwards. And you can't suddenly spring out in the last couple of turns and expect it to work. You're not an elf. You don't mm. have blodge pieces. You can't suddenly pull, you know, move seven and two go for it and isolate half the players on the wrong side of the field. You're dwarves. You can't. But look, what's interesting... Oh, wow. So he yeah. got the power, but he wanted the surf. Um... What's interesting is, uh, so you know, the, the three Ps, obviously now you've just got to focus on the banging, right? There's, there's yep. at the end of the day, your, your penetration has failed. You've still got a few turns. You've just got to make sure that you bang and bang and bang as much as you can. So that, like, even if you don't score this, this drive, at least, you know, you get something going in the second half because yeah. this, this drive is almost a write-off now. And if you, if you keep banging, then at least it's harder for them to turn you over and stuff. So, like, protection and banging, more, much more important than penetration right now. Absolutely. You're still looking for a, you know, that unlikely route forward. You know, a nice fail on the humans, giving you the ability to get four dwarves and the ball forwards, maybe. But... As you say, Jim, really at the moment, what is urgent is getting some humans off the field, is getting these numbers back even. So there's some chance, if it's 0-0, zero, zero, of a turnover in the second half. Yeah. Yep. Thanks, Big Chichi. Hello, Tompo. Not bad, thanks. Your missus is wondering what the hell you're watching. Brilliant. <laughs> but it is, like, penetration is a bit, like, that is what you need, do you know what I mean? Like, there's no other word for it. You know, they talk about it in football, don't they? Soccer and everything and, and all that kind of thing. You know, it is it is penetration. It is what you need. Like, it's not, it's, it's funny, obviously, that that's what it is. But that is what you need. It is, like, literally the most important thing about a dwarf drive as well because they're, like, so kind of bad at it, right? Even though they've got all the guard and stuff to bully their way forward. The fact that they're all movement four, they can't. They can't. Well, they're not. They're not as, so bad at penetrating. What they're bad is the the combination of penetration with protection, right? Like they they've got to keep the like you know other other teams could like could then just burst through a hole, whereas the uh, the dwarves just can't, right? So it's it's a struggle. It is a struggle for dwarves. One of the reasons why they can't win very well, <laughs> win games of blood ball very well. They really need to expand the hole over a few turns rather than actually just like bursting through immediately yeah <laughs> don't, don't know if you said that on purpose or not but... <laughs> 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 uh, ooh, now, now the slayer's in danger of getting surfed right well, I mean, this is it's a huge problem with Slayers. I mean, much as they dominate edges, they get lost and they get separated. And particularly when you're down dwarves already, you, you can't mount a rescue force. You can't push forwards and give it some friends to play with. Mm. And he's just getting smashed around and abused by other men. <laughs> yep. Looks like they might, yeah. If they just focus on the punching, that's the thing. If they just focus on the punching, the dwarves just try to consolidate as much as possible. Because it, it, it really doesn't look like they're going to make it past the halfway line at this point. No. no oh, can't. hello. Cheeky foul. Wow. That is interesting, isn't it? It's quite a high value piece, and then they've put a skill on it. And that's one of the reasons I don't like skilling my Slayer. I usually only roll with one at NAF style. And if you put the Mighty Blow somewhere else, firstly, your Mighty Blow goes on a Tackler, which I find is often handy. And secondly, the Slayer is still an attack force. It still puts out you know, a lot of blocks, and it's still an edge threat. It's still something they need to worry about, even without Mighty Blow on. So it just gives me a bit more sort of range of threat to give them concerns to think about. Mm. Yes, I agree completely. You. And also, they are very hard to keep safe. Yeah, yeah, that's what I don't like. I don't like the like the lack of control. That's that's my my main issue with them. And like obviously the armor eight. Like it seems yeah. stupid when other teams have teams have players full of armor eight. <laughs> yes, but... yeah. Or armor eight is their strong piece. Yeah. Whereas because the team's full of armor seven, but 
but that's the thing, isn't it? You're 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 like a chain is only as strong as its weakest link, and and now yes. you've got once you've got an armor eight piece that, that that like isn't the runner, that that guy is getting blitzed every single turn, and so so now yep. your team might as well be armor eight because because you know of the thirty blocks that you're taking, let's say sixteen of them are an armor eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. They're blitzing it every single turn they can, and that's if they can't hit the runner. Yeah, because trying to get you off the field, it's obviously easier to remove AV8. Yep. However, I mean, one of the reasons dwarves are struggling more than we all predicted is is also just the growth in strength teams, which means leaving leaving the runner out of a roster is also feels very risky. It's not just orcs and chaos anymore and Nurgle. You've got black orcs. You've got lizards. You've got you know even a lot more ogres being played. Snotlings that come with four big guns. Black orcs. Corn. You really said black orcs. Yeah, I did say black orcs twice. <laughs> but orcs we... are now faster as well as you know a pain in the tits. Like a week ago, we just had ogres win a, t a twenty-seven man tournament. Yeah. Was it Griff ogres? No. It was using Eurobolt rules, so it was Carla Ogres. Oh, right, okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, Dwarves are doing fine, we don't need to worry about them. They're, they're a solid race still, but they're not as dominant. I mean, they had that lovely period when everyone was putting sneaky good death rollers on the field. <laughs> but since people ended that, they've really not done that well. they back again for the Euros. Yeah, I did a couple of builds. They look all right and solid again, but they're not going to get you loads of wins. They should get you loads of draws, though, which is what they tend to be Euro teams for. Yeah, this is the thing, isn't it? Like winning, winning like a, a, a not a Swiss size, a Swiss size, a Swiss style, you know, standard NAF tournament. Um, they're, they're pretty much always like you know tabletop over a weekend. Where uh, you know everyone, it's it's Swiss, right? Because people yep. pay their pay pay their twenty quid or whatever to play to play six games, so they get six games. So so that's that's why they're always Swiss. But like you know, so then you have to win to win the tournament. You have to like win six games or whatever, right? Or maybe not, but almost certainly you're gonna have to win loads. And like four wins and two draws won't be enough. So, no. but then in, with this, with having overtime, the uh, yes. the the draws go way up in value. Yeah, massively so, because they just stay so well. Mm. <laughs> they get knocked down, but they get up again. Very good, Hammers, very good. Yeah, this is real bad for the Dwarves, isn't it? They're packed in, packed in tight, under pressure. Under pressure. This uh, this Slayer, yeah, though, Hammers. is looking like he's going to want to slay, slay somebody, doesn't he, next turn? That's... Well, he's going to have to do something about it, otherwise it's just dead, and he doesn't have enough dwarves to lose one entirely. Although, if it's keeping two humans honest, it's not the end of the world, is it? Yeah. It's yeah, but how it's best painted doesn't count. I know that you get a trophy yeah. for it, but it's not really the same. Savage. Absolutely savage. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Is this a thrower or a catcher? This must be the catcher, right? Yeah, because the thrower is in yeah. the mix. Yeah, the dwarves aren't scoring. No, no. No. Oh, no. This, no. Is, uh, this, is, uh, this is rough for the dwarves. Well. Oh, he's not surfing. Wait, no, you couldn't anyway. Disregard. Disregard. I, mean, I, I was being stupid there. With the very rear dwarf, you could use the chain to push a lot of the humans further to the left. Yeah, and yeah. Just try and potato over to the right. You see what I mean, Jim, about yeah. the round the corner chain push. There. You could have you could have got a surf that way as well. Oh no, yeah. I think, oh, no, I think it already blocked. But, um, it pushes a lot of humans in a whole chain over leftwards oh, and would have given some space but instead he's trying to push up this flank still and he is doing the serve yeah banging I think honestly I think concentrate on uh, the banging here and then yeah it's, it, it's not the worst it could still generate a space oh he skulls oh, oh, he oh skulls. so unlucky <laughs> he skulls out I think it was kind of the right thing I think you know just try and you know hope that you can protect like yeah, you, you, it, it's you, good on the protection level but 
there's still ways humans get through here there now, but it does give half a shot, at, you know, had that been a push out and then you could move the Slayer somewhere a bit less suicidal. Yeah, but all this is... Uh... Now it looks very bleak. I th I'm not sure about the counter surf. I think I think now the dwarf, the humans might want to like look to get the ball, right? Yeah, I'd it's... be looking to get the ball here, Jim. But or surf I'm pretty the sure ball. there's a double. I think I'm pretty sure there's a double surf on here. There's some not difficult yes. surfing here. Yeah. I mean, there's one human you put in, and it's it's you just stand one other one up, and you've already got a surf. Yeah. Yeah, there's this, this probably a triple surf on. Pretty, it looks like he's going ballwards. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this could yeah, be this could be go. both. This can be both, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Doesn't follow. No. I would want to follow just to at least tag the ball. Yeah, me too. Because for what I'm doing afterwards, but perhaps he's got to nip down another route to the ball in a minute. Mm. He could oh, take the power. He could have taken the power there and then took a one D on the ball. Yeah, but he can he can double surf and hit the ball. <laughs> yeah. Like the hitting the ball makes it not a triple surf. <laughs> True. Oh, he, he did. He took the power though. Oh, he took the power yeah. anyway. Somewhat well, surprising, right? Somewhat surprising because like the follow kind of makes it a bit worse i think i don't know because if he if he hadn't if he'd followed here he would have just got made it a bit more complex for himself than i think it needed to be yeah. mm. like obviously you could commit the catcher now to assist this and knock him out of the yeah. way but now, but now you kind of need a power right you need to power him to yeah. there to get the assist yeah. yeah 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 Whoop. Or just roll oh, all the gfis yeah, roll all the dice man hit to do the gfis he hit to Yeah, I think you should have followed with that one, and I think you should have surfed and got the double surf and the ball hit. Would have been pretty good. Reroll this, of course. Don't leave your balls unprotected, guys. <laughs> yeah, and it could go on the crowd, and he's still got the catcher to uh, respond. still got the catcher to respond. Yeah. Oh my god, it does, does go in go the crowd, out. and it's deep. And goes in the right direction. That's perfect for the humans. Oh my god. You mans, now, just don't activate easy. your ogre, for goodness sake. <laughs> He's yeah. doing Lord's work exactly where he is. Oh man. This was a controversial follow, right? Because he could have not followed. Like, Obviously the ball going there isn't great, which is why he followed. But if he hadn't yeah, followed, I'm... he could have tagged there and then punched. Which would have been really nice on like the... Yeah, I'm not sure I'd have followed. But, yeah. um, I mean, as it is, he's also now got so many dwarves that again get served next turn. That they probably can't yeah. stand up. Oh no, he's just, got, he's just got a dodge blitz, hasn't he, I think? He's got he's to. He has the 4 blitz. plus. I'd have come off the die. ogre already, but... Thank you very much for the raid. Electric Vision, glorious welcome raiders. This amazing t amazing match in the season finals. We we all favoured, uh, well not all, but most of us favoured Plotinus, but uh, this has gone very, very badly for him. And uh, Call Troop looks like he'll be getting the, uh, well, good chance of the turnover score. Amazing. To really stop this, you need to get both dwarves down there at the very least. So I think you probably wait and blitz with the second one. Oh no, yeah. it's a catcher, of course it is. Um, you can't re-roll this because you need the other dwarf down there. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, he could have gone with this one bit first because then he would have pushed him diagonally up, right? So he could have tried that. Yeah. I guess this he was thinking of if he pals, he can actually try for the pick up with the second one and he'll have guard in front. So this yeah. was a bit better on a pow um, and a bit worse on a non pow maybe. He's just so fucked either. Do you, do you try the 4-3 with the Blitzer? If you get the Dwarf off with the reroll left? I mean, I probably would, wouldn't you? Just oh, yeah. The, all those humans are coming, so just... You can 1-D. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah, get yourself off the uh, sideline a bit, but still yeah. horrendous. I mean, you've probably got to stand the other guy up just to take a hit and slow them down a little bit. Mm. But it's all such a long shot. Massive pickle, yeah. This is a this is a pickle and a half. Well, he can still pick it up on a five, um, but then you definitely can't bring the blitzer down. And I think you probably need to get both. Yeah. Okay, he's just going to stand and take the hit. I suppose that's 
you're fine. Yeah. You can't, you can't stay on the ogre. You've got to come and put another tackle zone on this ball. Yeah, well done. Yeah, I okay. like that. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. You could have gone around the other way, double G if I hadn't tried to pick up, but I think, yeah, getting yeah, in front. I, getting in front odds are it bounces somewhere worse, whereas there at least it's in two tackle zones, Jim. But, I mean, there's at least two humans can easily come, and that's if the ogre doesn't. Oh, it does. See a chain push. Yep. Well, you don't even I'm need not optimistic, not, I'm fatalistic about these things, but also there's just no point in giving up. So you try what you can do, and you hope, and you look at best case scenarios, and you keep you know, hoping you get lucky. <gasps> Why what? did he push him to there? Why? Why? Would, what? I don't. I don't understand, Jim. But okay, he's got two turns. I guess I mean, he just misclick. It's got to be a misclick. He's got a couple of rerolls, hasn't he? It's got to be a misclick. It's got to be. Unless. Just, one, Terrible two, choice. three, four, five, six. No, yeah, no, it must be a misclick. I guess you've got a slight payoff of having that guy there instead of, you know, diagonal off, but it's got to be a misclick. I mean, I've misclicked yeah. things before. Yeah. I misclicked in my game versus Hub and Bubbin. He was there in chat. Hello, Hub and Bubbin. Uh, that's why I had to do, like, some stupid, like, you know, four, five, five to not serve instead of a six plus to serve, which is obviously the six plus to serve is a million times better. So, you know, people do misclick. It just wants it to punch. Happen. You just want to punch with the uh, yeah. Cap that's the wrong I think it's square, just man. moving that. I think it's just now the other dwarf stands back. up and you get an automatic two die, whereas one square to the side you don't. You get a one die. It's just the wrong square, Jim. Yeah. 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 But oh well, it's probably all going to be all right. Still the wrong square though. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he's got two rerolls, one for the uh, one for the dodge, one for the pickup. Not the end of the yeah, world. Yeah, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. But it's the wrong square. <laughs> <laughs> it is definitely the wrong square. Yeah, maybe maybe a misclick. Oh, there we go. Punished. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Well, never mind. Slightly. I think you just take the score here, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. only one turn. You've got a KO as well, and he hasn't. And he's still got a reroll, so it's forty-five percent. It's seventy-five percent to get at least to the ball. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I don't like, I don't like not scoring there at all. Yeah, no, he definitely have to score. Yeah. The wrong choice. I guess he wants these serfs, right? I guess that's what he's thinking. But then and he's because dodged. that human's in the wrong square. When this dodge dodge touches off, if it successfully does it, you've got to hit something before anything moves. But he's dodged. I thought. I thought he's maybe he's just thinking about all these serfs, right? Maybe he was just thinking about all of the serfs. If this guy did like didn't dodge, then he could have uh, served him, and so he could have just, like done three serfs. Or something. Well, he makes the dodge. Oh, Fails not the, the rush. Well, now he gets to surf. Um, yeah, that's not. Fair. You don't surf. You that's... take the score. Yeah. No, you surf. You surf because that's why you didn't score. <laughs> Like, yeah. the only reason why oh! okay, well, he didn't... Uh... Yeah, that, that was the reason to, to not score, in my opinion, was to, was to get the serves. So yes, the not scoring was not a decision I thought was great, and then to not surf after it when you had the perfect opportunity to and still had re-rolls in the bag seemed terrible too. Um, I feel un uh, the Dwarves were unfortunate. They deserved that final blitz to take the ball carrier down, at least. I think that they were very unlucky. Yep. Well, the runner's out. But look at this. Two guard blitzers are out for the humans. <coughs> yeah. And he has got a second runner, right? He's got a blockless runner as well. And I mean, plus he's on defense anyway, but... He's on defense and he's one nil down. <laughs> so... And he's only got yeah, eight dwarves. This, as long as the humans have you... at least eight humans, they're going to be fine. Yeah. This is why you take the score over the serfs. Yep. But they do only have eight humans. So if the dwarves can reverse this, you know, fairly early on and get the momentum going their way, they've got a shot here. Yeah. yeah it's it's almost... not undoable. Almost Blood Bowl 7s, isn't it? Uh, I'm not convinced that have set this far forward with that in light, though, Jim. The humans just need to score super quick, and it's yeah. done. So, yeah. I'd, I'd like at least one a bit further back to sweep. Because I'd be pushing for a really quick push down a flank and score here if I was the humans. Like, turn so two what? score. You, so are, you are three blitzers down, though. <laughs> yeah, but they all come back. 
Well, three, two of them do, yeah. But the, you know, you, you've only got one blitzer, which is, you know, right. like a big part. But of I can the stop the dwarves humans. having two dwarves by coming up the right hand flank now, and then several dwarves can't make it over there to stop me. Whereas all of my people could have been there, ready to go. Oh yeah, like yeah. I mean, I agree. I, I would still try to, but it's just not. It's not as easy, right? Without the blitzers, they're like a big part yes. of the human team is the blitzers. They are. They are. But I've got linemen to screen and a catcher to run down the wing. I should be scoring in turn two. Call Troop gets an extra reroll, yeah. Pretty nice for Call Troop. Really nice. I think I think I'd be uh I'd be daiquiring. <laughs> <laughs> because how do eight dwarves defend a daiquiri? Um, that's very true. They don't. Um. Whereas if you try something on a two turn, make your pass or your catch or your handoff or whatever, you know, you roll any dice on your attempted two turn, well, the dwarves are going to slam in and it's, you know, it could get a bit messy, couldn't it? So. It usually does get a bit messy when you slam in. You will also have to at some point roll some dice, Jim. You can't not play Blood Bowl forever. No, but you can, you can delay it as much as possible. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I like that way, you know, that you've got the rear on the pickup and the rear on the catch to get the ball on the catch around yeah. just a straight three plus. So two one in nines. Um, two out of, that's about one in four and a half, isn't it? Instead of one in three to fail, so yep. ish. And so. also it gets the ball where you want it. Uh, and it means you're not having to decide on rerolls because if they failed, it was already a reroll fail. Yeah. Meaning your rerolls are always fine. So now what he's got to do is find a way of getting this catcher outpacing the limited number of dwarves and score at some point in the next few turns. The dwarves have to push forward and put some threat on because then if he just sits there and does nothing for eight turns, it's fine. He wins. Yeah. The next big question, of course, is how do eight dwarves put pressure on? And the answer is very badly. <laughs> You've yeah. still got to try. Yeah, with great difficulty. Yeah, huge difficulty. Going for the remaining blitzer. Smart. Doesn't Cost, get the knockdown though. Yeah, costs in the knockdown, yeah, right? I'd have got for something that doesn't have block on it, but never mind. Yeah. I, at this point, I'm just interested in getting one up on the humans because that's a great place to be. Yeah. Sweltering heat. Sweltering heat. Something, isn't it? I mean, yeah. Kickoff events were not my friend in this tournament. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and at least this like kind of affected both equally in a way, right? Like losing two yeah. guards is huge. And uh, the dwarfs not really losing much of value other than the runner is pretty big as well. Mm. And they, they lost men though, didn't they? Like dwarves would rather yeah. have eleven versus eleven than eight versus yep. eight. So yeah, massively it's, so. So yeah. going down in numbers hurt the dwarves, but the pieces that got removed for the humans are better pieces. So that gives a kind of symmetry to it. Yeah. Neither would have been happy, and then both would have looked at the other one and been slightly happier. So that's quite cool. <laughs> yeah. Better than the old sweltering heat, of course. I uh, at a tabletop yeah. event I went to with Pete W. He got like six of his players out and none of the opponents, <laughs> which is which is pretty bad. <laughs> So yeah, at least this is, it's always somewhat symmetrical, isn't it? The fact yeah. that the rooms are the same. It's always the same amount. It's just a matter of which pieces then go out. Yeah. Which is actually quite yes. nice. It's a good change. Yeah. So the only real, the only time you get to asymmetrical is if you know, you're down to 10 elves and you face 15 orcs. <laughs> it's still going to be 11 orcs and you're going to have 7 elves. Yeah. Or Underworld when they've still got 14 players and now they only get to start <laughs> with 11. <laughs> <coughs> I did have that, but as six of the ones I had left were all snotlings, <laughs> it got very hard to do much. <laughs> I think we still got the draw or something because Underworld. Yep. 
So he's getting to tee off a bit on the banging here, isn't he, uh, yeah. Bottomless? There's, there's a lot of hits here. This is the problem with this kind of L-Store. This is why I always hated the L-Store, right? Like this, you know, the uh, the Dakar is a recent innovation, isn't it, really? Well, popularised recently. Yes. Lots of people are now claiming that they've actually all done it for 20 years, even though no one's ever seen them do it. But um, it's certainly been popularised recently. And, yes. uh I think that's fair. Yeah, but this this has been popular forever. This is like since 1994, people did this, where they had their ball the ball carrier at the back, and they fought everybody. And then if anyone came, they passed it past them. Like you know, the elf stall. The elf stall is really old, and yeah. I've never liked it. <laughs> the problem with humans trying to doing it is that the elf stall requires a lot of mobility because you're constantly each turn you know, probing and looking for areas where you can get them out of position or pull the ball to one side. Humans struggle to do that because you know, of course, it's three plus to dodge anyway. Yeah. And with their, particularly with their guard pieces missing, I think tactically this is foolish, Jim. That I don't think they can afford to be in a fight with the dwarves. I think eventually that usually goes against them. Yeah, yeah. I think he's chosen. I think he's chosen the absolute wrong of one of the three options of quick yeah. score, Dakar, or this. <laughs> this well, is like the halfway if, house. If you isn't do it? want to play slow, then you just you first of all Nas turn you to get the catcher forwards to help out because it's got block, so it's too slow to the front. Secondly, I wouldn't be trying to pack things up because the dwarves have their guard on field and you don't. Yeah. So I'd be trying to actually separate them out and then not necessarily trying to win the fight all over the field, but in one corner where I can then progress the, you know, the ball forwards. I just think tactically this, what we're seeing at the moment from the humans is not a brilliant choice. No. Oh, huge dodge there. But then they got away with a few not brilliant choices in the first half, like that stall in turn seven, so... Probably all right. Yep. That's blood ball, isn't it? It's every everything's probably all right, you know. All the terrible things, like you know, a, a, a dwar the long beard dodges, right? Four plus, it still probably works, isn't it? Seventy five percent of the time. Even yep. even Saurus dodges work most of the time. <laughs> so well, not most of the time. More often than they don't. Is that most? I don't know how most of the time is defined, but even even a Saurus dodge is more likely to pass With than a fail. Yeah, with a reroll commitment, yeah. Which is crazy, isn't it? Yeah. And we look at a, a marked Saurus and think, oh, well, I can stand somewhere near that. It's marked. Mm. Yes, you can, but it may not be safe. Yep. 5% to get away. Yeah. How Ubik spray can? Oh, so there's the blitz come in. Could have gone for the ball, couldn't he? The uh, runner could have run round for the ball if he'd wanted. Not saying it's a good idea, but it was an option. Yes, it was. It, it was in range on a couple of go for it on a one die. Um, but of course, it's two die because it's a catcher. Yeah. It's very difficult to see that, but it is. Yeah, yeah. You can have the. Uh, they've got these thick positional rings now. Well, you'd be forgiven for thinking the yellow's the catcher. They have decided to go with cyan for catchers, and yellow for blitzers. Because that makes sense. Yep. And uh, purple for the thrower, so yeah. I'd have thought hopefully someone at some point will have a mod turn rings to NAF colour for rings. Yes, that'd be a good. That would be a very nice mod, wouldn't it? I think yes. people would download and use it. Mm. I certainly would. Not that I play Blood Bowl Three. <laughs> Customizable. What a crazy idea, BB Nut. In a modern yeah, computer game, a simple thing like a ring around a player, you could choose your own colours depending on what they were doing or what skills they had. <laughs> How dare you insinuate giving us the option to choose ourselves? <laughs> we are lemmings. <laughs> and Do next, you... we're saying little things like loner, which is an additional skill when you have a loner on your team, <laughs> should be displayed under additional skills. That's just crazy talk, PC. It is crazy talk, isn't it? Yeah. You could base the ball here, like I, I'm never for basing the ball normally, but you could, um, this guy could go one, two, three, four, double GFI, tag him, and then he could have double GFI, tagged the yeah. ball, and then everything would have been a little bit, yeah, like, oh. ta so tag the ball there, if you're going to tag the ball, like I hate going behind, that's the problem, I hate going behind, so I'd have rather... See, I quite like GFI. coming in from behind, Jim. Well, I mean, okay, sometimes, but in this case... <laughs> Coming in from behind is usually a bad idea. <laughs> I mean, that's... <laughs> Particularly they don't expect it, you know, a good attack from behind. 
getting some penetration when it's unexpected from behind is is great. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, the the problem is is you just don't want any men behind the ball, do you? Like no team does. Even like even Skaven would rather not yeah. have men behind the ball. And now yeah. dwarves behind the ball, and he's knocked on his ass, and now he's yeah, that dwarf on his ass is now completely fucking glorious. Yeah. Now it no, might as well I won't be give Kevin. in yeah. until I'm victorious. I'm not loving this potato. And I will defend. I will oh. defend. What do you mean? It's a blodge potato. It Real is a blodge potato. T. A Y T O. Okay, well, he's it, it, actually now I love it. Uh, with both GFIs, I love it. With only one, I didn't. But with yeah. both, it's not in range of tackle. So now it is. Uh, it's a thirty percent knockdown. Yep, really good. Thank you very much, Medicine Dan. Welcome to Team Fantastic. Absolutely glorious. Glorious. Glorious guys. Yes. Uh, yeah, he, he can't chain him either, can he? So no, that is that is no. good. Another reason to have not gone round the back if he yep. uh, <laughs> if if this if this you know uh, what's it called long beard lineman like had been stood there, would have been all right. It was a bit dodgy, wasn't it? I guess he was. I don't know what he was really thinking. I felt it was a little early to push, but um, I mean, yeah. as long as he gets it in next turn, it's fine. But he has to get it in next turn. Do I know it's not. No, I meant from the dwarf's point of view, it's a little early to push towards the ball. Oh. I'd have been shoring up still, as Jim said. Yeah. yeah less definitely. routes forward. But, you know, it, it it was tempting. I could see why. Yeah, and it's tough, right? Like, you, you know, he's got it no is. players. and he's, Hang on, he's hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> never mind. Never mind. I'm Disregard. Disregard. Errata, errata. Well, for a second, the game was bugged. <laughs> uh. So yeah, so easy 2D and then double GFI. Hit Kaz, kill him, then dodge off the runner. Easy. And suddenly game on. Yeah. Great TV series, Sam Janus. Four. Four. Surely you should have done him at the end, right? And then he could have blocked him and powered him, and then he could have cheerified with him at the at the last action yeah, because it's already absolutely. it's already like he's already not doing anything here, so the might yeah, well have not stood him up. Hundred percent. It's again, it's still a wasted dwarf there on the, on a two plus. I get why you didn't want to do it, so you leave it till the end of the turn. Uh, what? Uh, Hello. Uh, well, so hence he felt you had to advance there, but. I mean, I guess he's going to tag with the tackle and dodge the runner? No, he's just dodging with this one. He's just dodge blitzing. Doesn't get the pal. Doesn't get the pal. Wow. Okay, GG. I'm not... Oh, but now he gets to tag him as well, I guess. Terrible plan hasn't worked, but there we are. <laughs> I guess now he gets to tag with the thing and he gets to, like, do a penis yeah. cage. Gets yeah, to... I suppose. <laughs> gets to penis cage the catcher. So sorry, the penis cage. In case you're not familiar with that, <laughs> blood ball <laughs> slang. <laughs> is, you've got the two the two balls in the shaft, right? Um, and he can just get there. That is a technical term, yeah, BB. Not look. That's what he didn't re-roll it. No. So now it's a one in nine. Dude, you have one to one in nine to win that. the game. Yeah, you have to re-roll that. And you had to get there because without it. You know, it's like I said, it's a one in nine. You could never get both sides of it. You couldn't eye cage the ball, which at least would have made it a you know, reasonably difficult dodge out. A four plus, three plus, which is still seventy five percent, and then a one in nine. You know, it's, it's none of this was really good enough. No. You needed to power. You didn't get four dice on it, so at least the plan plan did do that, but involved a dodge first, which confused us. As it was. Oh, hello. Oh, makes it. Yeah, makes it on the second one. Oh. And goes for the Oh, it takes oh. the piss. Brilliant. <laughs> One go for it. That's all you need. One go for it. Yep, does it? There we go. Yep. And even without, it was still begging a 4 2 2 just to tag. So, yeah. it's fine. Well, it didn't require the, the 4. You could just blitz it clear. Yeah. And obviously, alleviating that huge worry of the dwarves 2 turning, followed by. Turning you over in two turns. Yes, which, you know, yeah. was a live concern. So I get it. Yeah, I, I'd have just banged it in. I'd have really. banged it in as well. Yeah, I think the three. I'd be more scared of the th one in thirty-six. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> than I am of the dwarves two turning and then turning me over. Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah I, I disagree. I disagree with this. Had it been NAF style, I would have, or like a NAF tournament, I would have stalled as well, because that my tiebreaker matters. <laughs> right. Ah, true. Yes. Yeah. Fair. But it's elimination, so. Just but it's elimination, so it literally doesn't matter. So banging it in is just better. And again, it's only if your tiebreaker matters. If you're on something like a stranded schedule, then it gives a shit just with the game. Yeah. Mm. Now you bang it in on next turn. Yes, yeah, now you have to bang it in. And, uh. Yeah, Moomin Slayer, I think even Elliot would say this is over now. Uh, but it's technically not, right? <laughs> it's technically not. <laughs> No, <laughs> two turn and a blitz, it's still very possible. Yeah, or any number of riots. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, remember, riot has changed now to time out. Glorious. Which means turns one to six, no, it will definitely go forward. It's not very good. Yeah, true. It's only seven and eight. And I will defend. I yeah. will defend. But yes, you can either two turn and Congrats riot. Congrats on two getting turn official blitz. caster roll. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much, Gremmers. Staying fantastic. There's no, there's no, months. there's don't, there's no way, there's no way we're stalling. There's just no way. No, no, no. He has to bang it in. He has to bang it in. I guess he, it, he's maybe possible. thinking it's of just blocking. Stupid. Yeah, it's really stupid. He's, he's, got he's five moved. Players. He's moved the catcher. Yeah, Whoa, what? No! What are you doing? Oh dear. Well, look, oh, I just thought you were overreacting over, for no, no reason. Way the ball's getting down the other end for one one, so it's fine. <laughs> What but the fuck is going on? It's stupid, but fine. This this needs to be punished. I mean, not that it can be punished, but it needs to be punished. <laughs> He's just also re-rolled an ogre blitz because you do, don't you? Yeah. Does he think he's losing one nil? <laughs> I'm losing. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be hilarious. <laughs> so, I Okay, well then, this is all perfectly safe. It's only at, you know, 75% of his dice on the ball. Yeah. Which is fine, isn't it, Jim? I mean, it is it is fine, right? Look, there's three turns. He's got to try it's and fine. score on this runner, like this blitzer record. here. It's like... But yeah, it's, it's weird that it's so needlessly possible. <laughs> um, should, should we be clear? By weird, we do mean terrible. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Good, yes. good. It's definitely a lot more likely than uh, than Hub and Bubbin's touchdown versus me. I'll tell you that. So it's not over. <laughs> it's absolutely not over. Consequently, the Dwarfs are putting a scoring threat in play. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I feel over the wrong side of the field. I mean, come on. But... He's got to get away from the ogre, hasn't he? Yeah. That's what he's thinking, I think. And he has made himself a GFI distance. Come on. Gets there the we go. There we go this time. Fully deserved, frankly. AV break, yep. maybe. We don't know because it's bugged. The blood means that I think it was an AV break, maybe. Uh, maybe that maybe the blood is the giveaway rather than the rather than the animation now. The dice did seem to say it. So we just they need a six Walker plus throw, throw, maybe. Yeah. They have not fixed the bug at all, uh, Mr. Rocker Crocker. Blood isn't always a giveaway either, okay. Yeah. It's like half fixed, right? It mostly works, but uh, sometimes it doesn't. I, I honestly hope that the dwarfs manage to score here, just oh, yeah, for this too. like this stall to be punished. Yeah, just out of total badness. Yeah. <laughs> double double GFI ogre blitz. <laughs> <laughs> like it's the play, isn't it? He's the only guy it who can is score. The play. It it's, is the play. It's actually he certainly the only has the GFI play. onto it. Oh, he's not going to. He was going to jib look. That yeah. is the blitz. You've got to re-roll it because it's literally the like you know it's the well, like you have to. He yeah. is. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> snake, diced. <laughs> Another snake. <laughs> really and getting really getting. <laughs> oh wow. So now he has no re-rolls if we go to overtime, and he's turned an easy two-nil win into a stressful possible one-one <laughs> draw. Yeah. It's still really unlikely, but how fun it exists at all. Yeah. Well, I don't like the, you've got, I don't a, like you've the got to hand it to Call Troop. You've got to hand it to Call Troop. He's at least given us an interesting game. He has, he has yeah. fabulously and fascinatingly managed to completely fuck this up from a totally one position, which is genius. I, I genuinely, if you'd shown me the board, 
could not have imagined how this would have come to pass. <laughs> I think um, the player... Oh, so he's blitzing here to get an assist there. I think what he had to do there was uh, block with the, with the, the lineman, what, what? blitz here with the slayer, and then get the blitzer up as a relay, right? That This blitzer had to go for yeah. the relay. I'm um, triggered now, Jim. This is not how this works. Yeah, he's, he wants to. He wants to get the assist in to to hit him to make it easier. He's going to pick it up runner. and do all the moving of it next turn. Yeah. He's going to pick it up on his runner. Vibrating at the fact that we still haven't moved the blitzer and he's one square out of range. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I did show yeah. that earlier. Maybe he thinks he's in range, and then it's all going to be for naught. Yeah, obviously that should have been the first thing you do is just move this yeah, guy. Yeah, just put him where you decide you think you might get the ball to next turn. Yeah. Which is probably eight spaces in front of where the ogre currently is. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't got, it? You, you could... still have to remember that you need to be able to throw 13 squares. Yes. With the ball being where three, it is. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So you can, you can yeah. forge GFI long vomit. <laughs> <laughs> into the end zone. Into the end yeah. zone. Into the end zone. You don't yeah. need to be in the end zone. So yeah. So you could get in the end zone even at the moment. Just make so. sure you're clear of that, you know, ogre. Yeah. So it can't blitz onto you. Well, the ogre is marked. Yeah, but he could pow, couldn't he? He can pow. So you could just yeah, go full there, move. Unfortunately. Yeah. Go on, move the scoring threat. You know you want to. You could just rely on him like failing the fifty-fifty, right? You'd have to pow, so it's like a one in four he even gets there. So you could just be, yeah. you could just make your increase your chances and yeah, and yeah, you can, you do. can. And you're right; he has to, you know, make double the tag him and pow, and then make go for it. Double to tag him, you depending where you go. You can literally just double tag the old. Oh yeah, well double, yeah, double tag him, and then you could be five squares or seven squares away if you want to risk it, but certainly five. Yeah. Double tag it. Yeah, you have to double tag oh, wow. it. You yeah, double tag it. It's, it's the answer. There's no humans that that. Maybe he's thinking. Do you know, I've just he's realized. Just, why are you going oh. direct? He's, is he going to throw to the beard now? I was thinking, yeah, maybe he's going to pass now and then hand off. Because if he passes the pass now, now on the beard the pass and pass catches is... and two GFIs and hands off, he gets it on the blitzer and, and it's done. The pass now it's... isn't terrible. It's not terrible. It gives him another go next turn. What? No, no. Then no. you should have done it this turn, not to there. Yeah, you should have doubled. Where he was was an easier pass and won the game if it worked. This is not right. My brain hurts. Okay. <laughs> and you've stayed on the edge. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you, Jim? Why wouldn't you? Okay, wouldn't you, Jim? I guess it's an uphill serve. I, I would not have stayed on the edge. No. No, you wouldn't have. Okay. <laughs> no. I wouldn't either. But it's made it more fun. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> this is what drunk blood ball looks like. He moved one square forward. He moved one square forward, but not across, right, to cut the angle down, to cut the no. distance down. Oh, it's a 3D uphill, to be fair. It was a 3D uphill. Okay, yeah, no, fair enough. And it has failed. Blockless ball carrier is notoriously difficult to knock over or off the pitch. <laughs> But yeah, this guy could have been like here, right? Which would have been a lot easier to get it to him. And as he needs the GFI, I'd have done it last turn. I, uh, yeah. yeah, I think. I mean, that, it was really bad to just. I think it was really bad to just move him one there. Like he's he got he's got to be over here. He just moved him directly forward. Like cutting yeah. the angle for the pass is pretty important. I would it's, say it's insane. He hasn't come across the field, isn't it, Jim? Yes. Yeah, I think it's pretty crazy. Like this I'm not sure he's playing to pass him. I still think he's playing to pass to the, the beard. Crable, could we not use the R word? Yeah. Yeah. That's not a nice word. No. Right. And be nice anyway. Even it doesn't matter what words you're using. Be nice anyway. Just be Let nice. Let's not kid ourselves. These are two very good coaches. Some of the play hasn't been great, and it's our job to point that out when we see better but, things. But let's at least say good. it's been entertaining and mind-boggling. But it's also, <laughs> there's a lot of money on the line. This is very stressful for them. I feel for them yeah, both. Yeah. That's true. It is Ooh. very stressful. Is he gonna... At least the dwarves it... have come up with a viable plan. It clears the uh, the interceptor. No, no, he's good. no, because he's the guy who blitzed. He could, he could pass oh. it to the... Uh, he could pass it to the Slayer. 
No, yeah, yeah. And then the Slayer hands off. Oh, he threw it to himself. Uh. <laughs> 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 well, I actually didn't hate the idea of him having a go at it last turn and yeah. not putting rerolls in, and then trying to work something out this turn. Yeah, the plan he came up with, whilst it was decent, he came up with a plan. It it, it wasn't a great one, was it, Jim? It wasn't the best, but look, it, it, it's tough. It's tough, right? It's really it tough. Is. It the, is. The pressure's on. Playoff nerves, as much as Art likes to mock it, is absolutely a thing. It's huge. And, huge. Uh, you know, high pressure. And, you know, he was down to eight players. He thought he wasn't going to have a chance, right? And then he's just seen Call Troops stall it for some reason. He's like, oh, my God. And then he's yeah. got to try and think and everything. Yeah. The, you yeah, know, the, the time is running out and everything. And... You know, it's it, it, dwarves aren't made for it. Are they? If he was, if he was elves and he fluffed it up, then you'd think fair enough. But uh, you know, he's not. He's probably not even used to even thinking of these games. If he, <laughs> these players, if he's if he's a dwarf man, so. And then Call mean, Troop, of course, got lucky early and leveraged that luck very, very well into yeah. early pressure and into a, a turnover touchdown in the first half, during which he did a ridiculous stall he absolutely shouldn't have done and should have been paid for, and then did the same thing in the second half when the game was won. Yeah. So some good play, but some very crazy decisions. Yeah, I mean, having played table one at a few tournaments for tournament wins, I know exactly how much pressure there is on. Like it, it fucks with your mind. There you go. There you go. And uh, so commiserations, Plotinus. He will go to the losers bracket to play the loser of Artemis versus Andy Davo. So now Artemis really doesn't want to lose because if he loses, <laughs> he's going to be facing dwarves with uh, Underworld. So that's uh, really amps up the pressure on Artemis. Um, it's very unfair of you, Jim, because as Sinai told us, you know, Underworld are the counter to dwarves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that was said. And uh, Cold Troop is playing the winner of that match. That the Art Devil match will be on Nakon's Twitch, uh, which, if you bear with me, I can link. And uh, that will be on tomorrow at about five. I, I think the stream will be on at at four forty five UTC. Um, that's when that stream will be on, and it will be myself and Adam Savage will be commentating on that. Uh, on I look the forward channel. to that, Jim. Thanks. I'm able to watch it. I think that's going to be fantastic, and it's great that they brought you two guys in, you and Andy. Yeah, thanks. Because we're going to have some commentators that actually understand Blood Bowl, and someone that's, you know, a good, hopefully random sort of colour man just there, making it all professional. Yep, yeah, he's really good, and uh, he, not the not 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 the Adam Savage, <laughs> an Adam Savage. <laughs> he's he's an esports he's an esports guy, not the uh, not the MythBusters guy, and uh, he's he's English. He's an English esports guy, not an American MythBusters guy. And nice. uh, yep, Cold Troop. You know, congrats to him. He'll be facing the winner of Artemis and Andy. And thank you very much, Hargrim and PC, who came in. Glorious to have you in the booth. Pleasure was a pleasure to be here and thanks for watching everyone. thank you for not locking the door yep of course yeah everyone's welcome everyone's always welcome <laughs> <laughs> oh dear there's a there's a joke in there but let's not go there thanks for watching everyone don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic <laughs>